car manufacturer known for world class vehicles. However, the servicing and repair aspects of the company have come under fire. Using the internet as a forum, consumers have voiced several complaints. To address this issue, Krista will introduce the consumer complaints regarding the BMW X5. Then, Ali will examine the customer perspective. Next, Loop will talk about the issues from the mechanic's point of view. Finally, we will make a recommendation that BMW can use to help address this issue. Alright, to start examining the problems that BMW is having, we're going to start by looking at their 2010 BMW X5. And we're mainly going to focus on the complaints that came back um, most frequently about this vehicle. So, it started, most of the complaints focused around the fact that they implemented a new system called iDrive. And most consumers found that this was far too complicated. It also presented the driver with a very high learning curve. Uh, even just driving it off the lot required a little bit of coaching from the salespeople, which um, a lot of consumers said wasn't helpful. Another complaint that came back was that their style was stale or redundant of their other vehicles as well as the competitors' vehicles. And this also included, along with the complaints about the style, a lot of consumers complained that the third row of optional seats was useless. This meaning that, yes, you could have an optional row of third third row seats, but they were so small that barely um, a child could fit back there. Uh, another complaint was it was too expensive, especially compared to their competitors, um, when they could buy almost the exact same look of vehicle, an easier vehicle to drive, and a similarly functioning vehicle. Theirs was much pricier. The luxury model with all the commodities um, started at $48,000, for example, and sorry. all right, and the final complaint is that the breakdown rate was very high. And a lot of complaints also stemmed in this area from the fact that when they did take their vehicle in, it took a really long time for it to get fixed and for them to get their car back. A lot of the um, problems stem from their iDrive system and other technological problems, which the mechanics didn't know how to fix because it's nearly impossible to troubleshoot any random technological um, problem that's going to stem in these cars. And that's mainly the complaints that came back about this this particular vehicle. So one of the biggest problems with BMW is the customer service and the overall customer experience. So there were, when looking at the complaints page, there was basically some 200 of them while there was only about 15 positive comments. So when looking through all of these, we saw which ones kind of were a trend, like which ones appeared more than others. So the main one, was bad customer service. And basically this ranges from like customers going into the dealership and getting treated really poorly or not getting the full story about the vehicle they're thinking about buying or just dealing with arrogant people and just not feeling like they're in a comfortable environment. And then another complaint that customers had was um, false promises of discounts and promotional deals. And basically, some of the things I read just, um, hold on, I'm gonna have to cut this up. That's cool. Um, basically, a lot of the promotional deals that were used to draw in people into the BMW dealership weren't true or they were misleading or they didn't tell the exact story. Like one thing we read was something about the BMW low maintenance, low cost maintenance, but this was only with scheduled maintenance rather than if people were coming in needing help with their vehicle. Um, another one 
was countless performance issues and faulty replacement parts. And this was a wide range of different issues, but um, Basically, when people come, would have, sometimes people would only have their cars for a month and they'd already have three different issues with their cars, and then when they got the replacement parts, they wouldn't work either or it'd be really expensive and they'd have to buy multiple ones. And then lastly was just rude employees. And this kind of goes into the bad customer service, but basically it's how customers felt when they went in to buy these BMWs or if they had issues with their BMWs, they just felt like the employees really didn't care about what they were doing. And one of the comments we read was that the guy stated, I've never encountered such worthless people. They must not be motivated and aren't getting paid very much because there are no way, there's no way a happy employee would act this way. So that just kind of sums up how people are feeling about these employees. So basically, because of all these different things, many people who have a BMW and had all these issues were, in, well, after they experienced this, they wouldn't go back and buy a BMW ever again. Because of a wide array of these issues, um, often customers of BMW would never return to that dealership because of their bad experiences and often just never buy a BMW again. So the typical mechanic at a BMW repair center must be a very enduring and knowledgeable indivi individual. Uh, customers and problems come from a wide range of backgrounds and they really have a high expectation for helpful service with effective results. So the first uh, major issue they have is the very competitive environment that they're in. They have to try to um, uh, bid parts lower compared to other repair shops and services. Labor rates are um, getting uh, pretty low and because BMWs uh, have such complex parts and engines, it makes it very difficult um, to make uh, their labor rates comparable to other um, types of car um, repair shops. Also, um, BMW customers can become very distraught and upset when their vehicle is not running properly. So they have to be work on being empathetic, which a lot of times um, isn't the case when they have such a, a hard task ahead of them. And uh, which brings me to their last difficulty, which is very meticulous tasks they work on, work through on a daily basis. And, um, you know, they really just have to have that strong motivation to learn every day and develop their skills. And if they don't, they're gonna lose customers to other businesses. In order to deal with these issues, we've come up with a few solutions. Um, the first and most general being that uh, BMW needs to take in as much customer feedback as possible. Given this uh, customer feedback, BMW will be able to shape their vehicles to be more customer friendly. For instance, a lot of complaints were that there were features that bumped up the price of the vehicle, but they added no utility. Um, the iDrive system is a great example of that, which uh, was better at confusing customers than actually improving the driving experience of the car. So um, using if customers had an avenue to um, be more involved in some of the decision-making processes of, of uh, the concept designs, I think that taking a look at um, the feedback of some of these um, some of these things that BMW is adding to their vehicles but aren't really adding much to the bottom line would be uh, a good place to start. Another idea that we had was to have a customer-focused workshop whenever a customer purchases a new vehicle, and this will help the customer um, become familiar with uh, the, different, the different features of the vehicles. So, um, as soon as they get done purchasing the vehicle, they will go into uh, maybe it would be kind of like a classroom setting or one-on-one -on -one with the dealer who, who will guide them through, you know, everything from starting the car to opening the trunk. I mean, just so that the consumer is really comfortable with their vehicle before they drive it off of the lot. To deal with the customer complaints about poor communication, 
we have an idea to send the salespeople and the mechanics to a yearly convention which would focus specifically on properly communicating with properly communicating with customers and this will ensure that the salespeople know what they're talking about and will be familiar with with the vehicles and be able to accurately portray them to the customers and it will also help the mechanics be able to in layman's terms communicate the problems with the customers and this this product training will also kind of tie in with the repair shop app and this is an idea that basically visually represents the internal mechanics of the motor so that when a mechanic is trying to discuss with the customer what problems exist with the vehicle they can show them visually and help the customer get a little bit a better idea of what's going on under the hood and why their car isn't working and on top of this we would implement a database of repair solutions and this would help address the issue of of mechanics not knowing how to fix the BMW machines so what it would be is just a database of any problem that any BMW mechanic has encountered and how that how they fix that problem and this could help the turnaround time in the repair shop yeah so so taking into account all of these problems you saw our list of solutions and we think that that would be the correct path for BMW to start to change their image and to change how they interact with their customers okay and we feel this list of solutions will really address the majority of the really bad problems that a lot of the customers have with BMW and the truth of the matter is if they don't change soon they may suffer irreversible harm to their brand image